A 33-year-old white female with no past medical history presents to the office complaining of discharge from her breast for the past few hours. On exam, you note straw-colored nipple discharge. The patient admits to mild irritation near the nipple. Which of the following histological findings is the most likely cause of this presentation? A. Benign polypoid epithelial tumor in the lactiferous ducts. B. Clear cells with large pleomorphic nuclei spreading into the epidermis. C. Malignant tumor arising from lobular tissue with hypercellular stroma. D. Enlarged ducts with microcalcifications and an intact basement membrane. E. Fibrous, glandular appearing with popcorn-like calcifications. So as you can see, this question is a high-yield video question that's attempting to elicit your understanding of breast cancer or breast neoplasia. The reason that I wrote this question, well, there's really two reasons. The first is that some medical students incorrectly believe that they don't need to know the histological descriptions of various tumors for USMLE and COMLEX. If you were reading through your pathology textbook and every time you came across a tumor, you sort of glazed over the histological description of that tumor, which is what you see here from answer choices A through E, if you thought that that was unimportant, well, unfortunately you're incorrect. This is actually very high yield especially in the subsections of pathology where there's lots of different tumors within a certain organ system. For example, in this question, I'm asking you about different types of breast cancer, but the question could just as easily be written as some type of ovarian cancer or testicular cancer, etc., etc. So the, the point of this, and the first point I wrote this question, is that in the subsections of pathology with lots of different tumors, you absolutely need to know the histological descriptions of those tumors so that you can match those descriptions, as you see here from A through E, with the actual tumor. Now, the second reason that I wrote this question is really the meat of this question and what I really want to train your brain to think like if you want to dominate USMLE or COMLEX. If you didn't know the histological descriptions of the different types of breast cancers, you could still make an educated guess based on your understanding of either what's in the question or what's not in the question. And what I mean by that is let's say that you're taking this question and you're saying to yourself, I have no idea what A, B, C, D, and E are referring to. To me, it's just histological jibber jabber and I'm, I'm gonna just take a total guess. The way to approach this question in that case is what are they giving me, what do I know, and what are they not giving me if they want to point me in the direction of one of the other tumors? So let's go through this systematically and approach this from the lens of somebody who's a high yield question taker. In this question, you should pay special attention to the fact that the patient has straw colored nipple discharge. The other thing is that the question didn't tell you anything about the patient in terms of temperature such as, you know, like fever, tachycardia, etc. So they gave you no signs of infection. So in the in the answer choices, what you can immediately do is think about what diagnosis will produce a straw colored or slightly bloody nipple discharge. And once you have your differential, you're considering things like cancer versus infection, etc, etc. But the way that you look at this question is, what would they had to have given me in the vignette if they wanted me to select an answer that was describing something like, you know, mastitis, that's not cancer? Or what would they have had to give me in the question if they wanted me to pick something like a Philodes tumor, et cetera, et cetera. So because the only real buzzword that you see in this question is straw colored nipple discharge, your brain should already be generating the most likely answer, which if you see the phrase straw colored nipple discharge, you need to think intraductal papilloma. So the answer to this question is it's an intraductal papilloma, but now the question is which of these descriptions describe the intraductal papilloma. So you have to be able to do two things. One is reason through what clues they would give you in the clinical vignette if they wanted you to pick a certain tumor. And throughout this video, I'll show you for each of these different diagnoses on your differential what buzzwords you should look out for. But the second part is once you've identified which tumor it is, you have to know the histological description. So that's just brute memorization. So the answer is intraductal papilloma. And the phrase here that describes intraductal papilloma is A, a benign polypoid epithelial tumor 
in the lactiferous ducts. So when you're studying, make sure you understand the histological descriptions, but also understand what buzzwords would be in the, the clinical vignette if they wanted you to pick a certain tumor. So let's go through each of these answer choices and I'll show you why B, C, D, and E are incorrect. So choice B says clear cells with large pleomorphic nuclei spreading into the epidermis. So this histological description is how we describe Paget's disease of the breast. Now the question is, if you don't know the histological description of Paget's disease of the breast, what buzzwords would you look for in the clinical vignette to get that answer correct? Well, for Paget's disease of the breast, you can describe it histologically as as the answer choice shows you, clear cells with large pleomorphic nuclei spreading into the epidermis. The other thing that you might see grossly is firm, rigid mass with irregular borders. The buzzwords that you could look for in the clinical vignette that would push you in the direction of Paget's disease of the breast are plus or minus the presence of blood-tinged blood nipple discharge, scaly or erythematous superficial rash with burning, microcalcifications under the microscope, and then grossly you would see images that look something like what you see at the bottom of this slide. Now, because Paget's disease of the breast has such a unique gross appearance on the surface of the breast, they're most definitely going to give you the picture that you see here if they want you to pick Paget's disease of the breast. So if we go back to our question, I would tell you that if you have zero idea what the actual answer is, but you know which description refers to Paget's disease of the breast, you can probably eliminate that, that answer because if they wanted you to pick Paget's, they're probably, in most cases, this is a total guess, but maybe like 80% of the time, they're going to give you that picture because it's so characteristic. So the sheer absence of that gross picture is probably enough to reassure you that Paget's disease of the breast, and therefore answer choice B, which describes Paget's disease of the breast, is not the correct answer. Now let's talk about C. So C refers to a cystosarcoma phyllodes, and sometimes these are called phyllodes tumors. The description here is malignant tumor arising from lobular tissue with hypercellular stroma. And that histological description is so high yield for the phyllodes tumor. So if they wanted you to pick the phyllodes tumor, they might give you the histological description, which I've italicized at the top of this slide. They might also say that this tumor is larger or faster growing, but similar to a fibroadenoma. They describe what's known as a leaf-like architecture with papillary projection and then, of course, the epithelial line stroma with hyperplasia. Now, just like we saw in our last example of a breast tumor, the phyllodes tumor or the cystosarcoma phyllodes has a super unique picture. Under the microscope, you see these papillary projections with a leaf-like architecture. And this is so unique and so characteristic of a phyllodes tumor that if you don't see this description in the clinical vignette or you don't see this picture put alongside the question, you can probably eliminate that they're asking you about a phyllodes tumor. Because after all, the one truly unique characteristic of a phyllodes tumor is that you have these papillary leaf-like projections and typically there's not straw-colored nipple discharge. So going back to our question, the sheer presence of straw-colored nipple discharge plus the absence of anything that talks about leaf-like projections or anything to do with the histology itself in the question is probably enough to effectively rule out that that is the correct answer and therefore you don't have to pick choice C. Choice D is in large ducts with microcalcifications and an intact basement membrane. Now high yield, anytime you see intact basement membrane, you're already thinking about an in situ tumor. And this one in particular is talking about ductal carcinoma in situ because of the enlarged ducts with microcalcifications. If they wanted you to pick a ductal carcinoma in situ, they would have given you either the description that you saw as answer choice D, or they would have told you that there was an area of central necrosis and that this led to an increased risk of malignancy. And the fact that none of this is mentioned in the clinical vignette and all they're giving you is the straw colored nipple discharge is not enough information to alone pick ductal carcinoma in situ or of course the histological description. You might see the pictures that are listed at the bottom of this slide if they're going to attach a picture to the, the, the question that wants you to pick ductal carcinoma in situ. But the thing is, is that truly this picture is not as high yield as things like the Philodes tumor picture or the gross picture for Paget's disease of the breast. So when it comes to ductal carcinoma in situ, typically those questions will ask you what is 
they'll give you the description of ductal carcinoma in situ, and then they'll ask you a question about like, you know, what does this confer a greater risk of? And the answer will be malignant conversion. So that's really the high yields for ductal carcinoma in situ. But in this question, again, all they're giving you is a 33-year-old female with slightly bloody nipple discharge. There's not enough information to go deeper than that. So you have to pick the most common tumor that causes straw-colored nipple discharge, which again is answer choice A. So we can effectively rule out ductal carcinoma in situ. The last choice here is choice E, which says fibrous glandular appearing with popcorn-like calcifications. And this is a fibroadenoma. A fibroadenoma, they'll describe exactly as answer choice E uh, says. It's a fibrous glandular appearing with popcorn-like calcifications. The popcorn-like calcifications are particularly a high-yield buzzword. The other thing grossly that you might see is what's termed as a rubbery, well-circumscribed, usually mobile and non-tender mass. Now, the thing about fibroadenoma that they're going to put in the clinical vignette if they want you to pick this answer is that this is a hormone-dependent tumor. So in the setting of pregnancy or taking oral contraceptives, this is more likely. And then in the setting of menopause, this is less likely to occur. The, the histological slide that you see at the bottom of this slide is really high yield because it's so unique appearing. You can clearly see the fibrous glandular appearing uh, mass here and this is this is really unique to the fibroadenoma so if you see this picture you can stop what you're doing and either pick the fibroadenoma or pick the histological description of the fibroadenoma pay special attention to the fact that this is hormone dependent that will always come up in a question that wants you to pick fibroadenoma so in this example they didn't tell you anything about the fact that this was someone who was pregnant or that she was perimenopausal, et cetera, et cetera. So you can assume that because they're not mentioning hormones, they don't want you to pick fibroadenoma. So here again is the summary of our question with all of the different answer choices. The takeaway from this is three major points. First, know your histological descriptions of different tumors, especially in subsections of pathology where there's lots of different tumors like breast cancer. Two, Think about what is not in the question, okay? So in this question, it's pretty vague. The only thing that the writer has given you is that it's a 33-year-old female with straw-colored nipple discharge. They then ask you, what's the most likely cause of this presentation? So all you have to go off of is what's the most likely cause of straw-colored nipple discharge, which should make you think of two things right off the bat, intraductal papilloma and mastitis. Now, because there's no mention of infection or irritation or anything that would push you in the direction of an infection, this is obviously asking you for the most likely cause of a tumor that causes straw-colored nipple discharge. And therefore, the answer is intraductal papilloma. Remember that for Paget's disease of the breast, they'll probably give you that gross appearance or describe the gross appearance. For the phyllodes tumor, aka cystosarcoma phyllodes, they'll probably describe some type of papillary or leaf-like projection or give you the actual histological picture. For ductal carcinoma in situ, not a lot of high-yield pictures are really associated with this, but look for that intact basement membrane. And for the fibroadenoma, look in the question stem for evidence that it's related to some change in hormones because this is a hormone-dependent mass. So that's it for this high-yield question bank. Just to summarize and repeat myself one more time because I cannot stress it enough, start to think about what's in the question stem and what's not in the question stem. Take a question that you don't know and ask yourself, what would they put in this question stem if they wanted me to pick A versus B versus C versus D versus E. That is how you dominate USMLE and Comlex.